That's what true success is, as far as I'm concerned. People say, absolutely. Well, it's like, listen, if you can do what you love doing and get, you know, be able to sustain yourself and enjoy what you do every morning when you get up out of bed and you have your health and you've managed to be able to maintain relationships. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That success, because you know, I I don't know about you, but I'm always I like reading autobiographies of musicians and oh yeah, and so on and so forth. And if they have one theme that runs through them, is that usually their lives are a disaster. You know, with very right. few exceptions, do you read about a stellar you know musician who had a good run from day one to the end? Usually, it's fraught with all kinds of malfeasance. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, at the end, you know, when I think to myself, you know, I've gotten this far without, uh, you know, I, I feel like I can get on an elevator with just about anybody and not feel uncomfortable. It's like, yes, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude. Amen. You know, amen to that, because that's that's how I kind of realized, like, look, man, I have to be upright. I've got to I've got to do the right thing, especially as a band leader. I got to pay people, even if it means I'm not getting paid. I need to do this. I need to do that because. You know, well, number one, it's karmically the right thing to do. Right. And number two, I don't want to be 53 years old and looking over my shoulder for someone that's pissed off at me because I didn't pay them or whatever it is. It's just it ain't worth it, man, because it infects the creative space, too. Right. And and, And if you don't make your life about like, I mean, honestly, man, there were many I had many opportunities in my life to go another way and and go big and be the man and do right. the thing. And I was like, now nah, later for that, because it, it just didn't make, it didn't make any sense for me. I had seen it with other people and I knew that it was not the right thing for me. But now would I like to have had some of that money? Would I like to have been paid a few times? That would not have been bad. That would have not been a bad thing. But honestly, man, I really wouldn't change it because I'm sure we're, we're birds of a feather in this. It's just like, look, there's always some onion skin that's going to get peeled back every day with this mystery of why I suck so much and how I can get better. And so, damn, I wouldn't trade that for the world. And my friends who went those other directions, they they got driven off course a little bit. You know what sure, I mean? Absolutely. And, and, and then what happens all of a sudden, even if you're a really good musician and, and all of a sudden you're like the head of like a multinational music corporation, then what do you do? It's like you become one of those doctors that's like now an administrator. Do you want to be an administrator? Right. Or do you want to be doing surgery? You know what right. I mean? It's just exactly. one of those things. It just depends on, on who you are. But I don't know about you, but for me, I, I still would, would have done everything the same way, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would, I would have read a few more books, but other than that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was a, it was a long time there when I was, uh, you know, self-medicating that reading a book just wasn't an option. I mean, you get home at night and you, you can't see, let alone read. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, man. <laughs> but then once I got later on, when I started traveling, I started, started reading more, reading more sedition seditious materials. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, it gets to a point like where we're at right now. It's just anything is seditious. Just a word is seditious. Right. Exactly. The. the. <laughs> wow. Well, speaking Boom. of these days, you got a new record coming out, right? Well, we had it. It came out. I, um, I put a thing out with Carter McLean, who's a right, great right. drummer. I, Dylan may, may know him. He's oh, great. Yeah. And we put out a little thing that you, that this is the new that, that we're doing now. It's like the ultimate cottage industry. It's, we're not putting anything out on any streaming services because if you're not on the road, why put stuff on a streaming service? The only purpose right. of the streaming service is to advertise for your gigs, right? Right. So if there are no gigs, forget it. So we just made this what we call a play along record where we just played like 12, 11 or 12 grooves and, and, um, and then put it out as a download only, and you just buy it directly from Carter for 15 bucks. You awesome. know what I mean? Uh, I'll, I'll send you one. I'll send it awesome. to you. Um, and, um, Thank you. But, but, it's, uh, but, you know, yeah, I mean, that's it. I made, Lucy and I made a record in, like, right when the COVID was starting to happen. We made a record, but I don't know if I can put it out because if you're not touring and you can't sell a record, it costs a lot of money to put it out. And if right. you can't make that money back, it's like, Man, it it's, doesn't make sense to put it out. You know, that's the, that's the messed up part about it. You know what I mean? So it's strange times. Yeah, baby. But hey, man, we got our health. 
So, we do so, indeed. Such as it is. Such, such as it is. <laughs> as it is. Well, I got our organ, our organ player is coming down from Minneapolis this weekend. He's actually staying at the studio, and we're going to social distance and do our. We're going to try to get this record done because we need. We, we've just been so overdue and doing it. So, yeah. well, probably man, if some, you guys, if you guys are going to spend some time together, you should just all get tested. And yeah, then, exactly. Just go get the test and then be done with it. You know, exactly. and then you're like, okay, we can be a normal person as long as, as long as we're in the cave together and, exactly. and, and, and oh, we have the food delivered. We'll be, we'll be okay. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I did the antibody test a few weeks ago. It was probably a month ago now, but, uh, cause I, I just wanted to know and, and I, and I didn't have, cause I was traveling a lot, right. I'm sure as you were right up yeah, to, yeah. We're in lockdown. So, but apparently I didn't have it. So but you know, those things aren't apparently the antibody test isn't 100 percent either but uh, it's not yeah i had it too i was disappointed i was in italy right when the shit was really popping oh. off i almost didn't get home i mean i would have gotten home but it was it was definitely like last chopper out of nam kind of shit, you know what i mean oh, um geez. but but whatever man so and i had a sore throat and i felt when i was yeah. there i was in bologna so i figured like okay you know what i probably had it and that was my whole the story i kept telling myself to make myself feel better you you know, I probably had it. I probably had it. Right. I had the antibody test. No, negative. Yeah. <laughs> I love Bologna, though. Bologna is a magnificent place. The food there is unbelievable. Insanity, man. Wow. So good. I think I probably gained. I, sh I shouldn't have had that extra pizza. <laughs> oh, the pizza there. Mm. Yes, it's glorious. I, sh I shouldn't have had that extra one, man. Well, you know, we, we probably should talk a little bit about some guitar action in terms. Yeah. So you've got. You were playing different seven strings before. What's the difference between the stuff you're playing now versus initially oh, when you started doing your thing? Okay. Well, you know, I started with Ralph Novak, a guy in the Bay Area who had this whole fan fret system. Oh, right. uh, and and so I was I did hit, we we had a little collaboration for a while. Um and then a guy named Jeff Traugott in Santa Cruz made me a couple of really beautiful guitars. But you know, people kept coming up to me at gigs and like, hey man, I want to do this. How, where can I get one of these guitars? And it was just like, they were just prohibitively expensive and everything right. had to be custom made. So a guy named Clay Connor and uh, who used to work for Ralph Novak and, and Wes Lamb, who Wes Lamb is a great luthier. He has a, a business called pre-war guitars. You may know those guitars. Uh, they're in Hillsboro, North Carolina, just 40 minutes down the road from me. Uh, and they have a CNC machine and Wes, before he did pre-war, he was doing multi-scale instruments and he built me a few instruments um, and I just went to them. I was like, look, man, you guys have the ability to churn these things out. I want to make essentially a Fender version of this instrument, meaning it, it's not a Fender guitar, but the same right. kind of production, uh, you know, con concept as, sure. as, as he was doing it, it just so that you can make an affordable, a great affordable instrument. You know, uh, and so we made sevens and eights. And now I'm playing this thing that I call the big six, which is like it's kind of the one I love the most now because okay. it's got a real bass range on it. Like it's it's like 30 to uh, 26. Um, there we're going to we're making one that's 30 to 27 with the scale lengths. Uh, and these guitars are it's called hybrid guitars. I'm, I, you know, full uh, disclosure, I am a part of owner of it but dude they're the guitars i play and they're like the best ones i've had and Excellent. normal humans can buy them and decide like man do i want to go down this road you know um for instance like the big six if you there's a short scale which is like 28 to 25 and a half and a long scale if you're a bass player you get the long scale if you're a guitar player and you wanted to fuck around with what i do you get the shorter one and you're like ah eh, this is cool, but I'm just going to tune it like a baritone. And then we tune it like a baritone. You're in heaven because 28 on the bottom and 25 and a half on the top, man, it just yeah. sounds so even throughout the whole thing. And a two and a half inch fan. Um, I don't know if you've tried these kinds of guitars. No, I, I, well, before. I tried uh, Tosin Abbasi's guitar. Yeah. Yeah. His is a small fan to like a two inch fan or something. They're not hard to, to get used to. They're pretty they kind of fall right under your fingers, you know. Right. But but anyway, so these these hybrid guitars are they're damn good and 
you know, I, I couldn't be happier. And, and it's like I'm 40 minutes down the road. So every couple of weeks I go down there and kind of R&D stuff and try instruments out and call my friends up and say, hey, would you be interested in trying this? Blah, 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 blah kind of thing. And and um, it's pretty damn cool, man. You that know, sounds cool. Can't well, they sound glorious. I mean, when you're working out tunes now, I mean, I mean, I know just vaguely, I nowhere near what you're doing, but the, um, you know, just when I got into the Chet Atkins stuff and I, I finally, it started to appear before my mind's eye of, oh, the bass line is over here. The chords are here and the top part's over here. You can kind of segregate it in your mind and it kind of makes sense. But what you're doing is like a, is like that times a hundred. So when you're working out something now, do you still do it piecemeal or you're to the point now where you can automatically segregate that baseline in your mind as well as the chords before you start doing a lead on top of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, when I began, yeah, definitely. When I was first starting out, you really had to pull stuff apart and isolate it. Right. But, and I was trying to do all my show off then too. Like I got to make sure I get all of my jazz licks in here and I show <laughs> <everyone> <laughs> and, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I got to make sure I show everyone that I know these chord changes, you know, right. <laughs> but really as time went by, I realized that what the instrument does is, is it doesn't do amazing bass and amazing guitar. Uh, but what it does, it's really cool is it does this great interdependence when you get the two parts rocking as one it's like right. a drum set player you know you have that kind of feeling of 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 being in the contrapuntally being in the flow of the music and and then time and feel becomes of the utmost importance you right. know uh and you don't need to play uh you know it doesn't it, it, for instance, like if you or I played together, which I hope we get a chance to, yes. it would really be great because I can't play any of the stuff that you play. I would just be grooving, but being a guitar player, I would know within the groove what the right to play was underneath what you're playing. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So, so it's really more about kind of thinking like a drummer and, and you have the harmony going, you're thinking like a drummer and you're just making, you're learning all these um, combinations, counterpoint combinations in your right hand and your left hand. And then you just kind of, you really have to go with the flow and you just try to relax as much as you can, which is hard to do because it's right. such a frenetic thing. And then you just try to deal with the time and, and just try to relax and, and, you know, listen to the drummer's right hand. You know what I mean? Speaking of drummers, the mighty Doug Belote, is a mutual buddy of us. Oh, that dude is what a feel that guy has, man. He's a good man and a great drummer. Yeah, uh, fantastic. years ago when he when he used to do some Fender stuff with Guthrie Trap and and uh, he would come out to Nam and we'd hang out and we just we just hit it off because the the hilarity factor was. Uh, oh, was dude, right. his his impersonations of people that's like black belt level. Yeah. Third dawn level. It's insanity yeah. how good it is, man. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's a bad a New Orleans man. man. That's right. That's right. Darn tootin', man. Indeed. Ooh. So are you going to be doing any more? Um, I, I've seen various different things of you doing stuff online. What, what's kind of your, are you doing anything consistently in terms of uh, like live feeds? And how how's that experience been for you? Has it been... It's been okay. I'm sure you're doing similar stuff. It's not, you know, what I've been doing is I've just been trying to get my recording act together at home and, and just try to do some stuff and put out some stuff online and see what happens. You know, yep. I mean, I think it's going to be a while before we get to play again. Yeah. You know? I, I was listening to uh, one of the experts today um, who actually has, you know, credentials and uh, <laughs> yeah, imagine that. And uh and she said something like, imagine that we are in chapter one of a war and peace like novel. That's where we're at with coronavirus. I was like, oh, oh my God, oh, oh, oh. I didn't even Sorry, like that folks. Book. Didn't mean to drop the I don't even like that book. <laughs> <laughs> Napoleon be damned. <laughs> sure, let's do that. Sure. Well, Charlie, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. This is really the first time you. we've had a chance to converse other than yeah, man. texting and... Exactly. <laughs> although the texts are good. 
Yes, we're, man. We're, we're good textures, ladies and gentlemen. So good. So There's good. hilarity in our texting. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, you stay safe. I would play with you anytime, anywhere. Yeah, I yeah. I would love to do some. Oh, yeah, games, man. So. I, when, when we're when we're able to, I'm coming up there, man. I'd love to play with you guys, man. That'd it be a ball. It shall be done, my friend. Oh, it's well, you, done. Put you the take gristle, care of yourself. Put the gristle on the grill, man. I, I'll be there, man. It shall be marinated <laughs> accordingly. <laughs> All right, man. All right, have a good one. Thank Thanks you, so bro. Much. You we'll too. See you, soon. See you baby. Bye-bye.